Life Her Podcast. Hey, you. Her is me, her is you. Her is us, her is she, her is we. United we stand, baby, that her for keeps. I'm coming and I demand my space, I know it's free. I owe myself the world, they tried to count me out. Hopping down some dark roads, they tried to pound me out. From cloudy to sunny, ain't think that I would make it out. I need a positive emotions to fill me out. Hi, this is Life Her Podcast, Yvette Lloyd. I am live now with Tiffany Harris and Brandy Hawkins. Hey, ladies, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. How's your day going? Busy real estate day. I'm pretty good. <laughs> I know that's right. So how are things going in the market right now since the pandemic has slowed down a little bit, tad bit? So it's definitely still um, very much a seller's market. It is uh, very competitive and um, for buyers a, a bit frustrating. And um, it, it's a lot. So the market is, is definitely working in the favor of sellers. Wow. That's a, I, you know, I kind of thought it would probably be a little high because some people are trying to move. Some people purchasing homes and everything. Yeah. Yeah. People are selling and moving because selling it right now is an opportunity to see money that you probably wouldn't see um, any other time. And buyers are moving because interest rates are pretty low. Yes, that's in, that's true indeed. Um, could you guys tell me a little bit about your real estate company? Sure. So Harris Hawkins & Co., um, we opened back in June, July of 2020. Um, we currently have 22 real estate agents that are affiliated with us. Uh, and we, you know, built the brand or the brand is built on collaboration over competition. Um, so we wanted to create a space that was for agents that had uh, the things that we needed when we first started out. Um, so that is, you know, support, training, um, as well as a, a safe space to be able to collaborate with other agents um, and not so judged and, and get the assistance that you need to really grow your business. That is amazing because I, w- I was going to ask you, like, how is it possible for beginners of being in a real estate well being a real estate agent how can they get ahead with everyone having so much competition so tiffany has uh this is brandy um tiffany has a saying that your only competition is yourself um so i think one of the biggest things is just not focusing on what everyone else is doing definitely uh, you know get up under someone um, who is where you want to be um so you know just being open to being teachable um, definitely educating yourself, that, that is for sure. A lot of new agents want clients and clients and clients, but the, the question we always ask is if the clients come, are you prepared to take them? So just preparing yourself uh, more so with education is probably one of the best ways to get ahead. Wow. So did you both, um, Tiffany and Brandy, did you guys start off with your own company or you started with another real estate company? Nope. So we did not start off with our own companies. In real estate, you have to be a licensed real estate uh, agent for three years before you can get your broker's license. So essentially, a real estate agent's license has to be hung with a brokerage. And that brokerage pretty much says um, that I will supervise, I will keep my eye out on this agent and just make sure they are in compliance with with everything. Um, So you can't start out as a broker, you do have to start off as a real estate agent. Um, we just got into, we, we decided to open the brokerage uh, this past summer. Oh, okay. That's amazing because um, I know a few people that just started off right off the top in real estate, but they wish they had started off with a company to actually get their foot in the door and get wet and realize the market because they're first time doing this stepping out they kind of failed and made like a few mistakes but they got it together now um what is the um portion of when people are trying to find their own identity and their style out in the market with full talent of the competition that is around i'm sorry can you say that question again like how how can people create their own identity and style to even oh. just stand out in a market. Oh, yeah, yeah. So 
So definitely being knowledgeable. Um, that's definitely one way. Um, we are really big into marketing and branding. So marketing um, is, is essentially just a, a really good way to differentiate yourself from competition. Um, the one thing we always ask our agents is, what is your unique selling proposition? What's special about you and why would someone hire you um, versus someone else? So people don't want to hear, you know, I'm fun and, you know, I like to have a good time. People want to hear what you can offer them. Um, so just knowing your market, knowing your your information when it comes to um, what you need to what you need to know to protect your clients um, on the seller side and buyer side are definitely uh, ways I would say. Okay, what advice do you guys have for a first time home buyer? Um, I think in any market, but um, specifically the current market that we're in um, is definitely listening to your your trusted agent um you know a lot of people will say that they you know i can't trust everybody but um not having the trust in your real estate agent and that team that's going to assist you in purchasing um could really be a detriment to your process could really hinder um how smoothly your process may go or the success of you being able to secure a home um so definitely doing your research and finding a knowledgeable real estate agent to guide you through the process um, and, you know, taking recommendations from them as it relates to lender partners and, you know, title companies, um, just because it's, you know, it's a ton of lenders, there's a ton of title companies and kind of just flipping through the yellow pages, not that we really do that anymore, but kind of just, you know, blindly finding someone could really, you know, affect you, you know, long term. Um, so I would definitely say doing your research and finding a, a trusted a uh, real estate agent and experienced and knowledgeable real estate agent um, in, in the market that you intend to purchase. Okay. I know um, some people are confused on exactly where their credit score should be, what should be on their credit and what can't be on their credit. Could you give them um, a little bit of one-on-one on what do they need to be able to purchase a home with a good credit score? So that really comes down, it, it's a number of, of factors that, that kind of tie into that. And, and it really depends on what their end goal, you know, is going to be. So typically what we do is that we're going to refer a client to one of our preferred uh, mortgage loan officer partners um, to really assess their financials. So as a real estate agent, that is not something that we really dive into just because we don't see any of the financials of our clients. Um, that's really on the lending side. You have some lenders that are able to, um, you know, work with a client that has a credit score as low as 580, um, and some who their minimum for that particular lender may be 660. But it's a number of other factors that tie into that. Um, your DTI, or what we call your debt-to-income ratio, um, is a piece of that. And as that, you know, all of that kind of falls into qualifying. So it's not really just a basis of your credit score. Um, what credit score contributes to is the interest rate that you can, you know, secure uh, depending on where your credit score lies. Um, but again, that's not anything that we see as real estate agents. So that would be something mm -hmm. that we would have the lenders to take a look at. Okay. Could you, could you guys give me more information on your academy and the six modules of teaching? model that you have? So we have um, different trainings that we offer to um, our agents. Um, so a couple being uh, the, the what we call is more so the onboarding training. So we have um, contracts to close, which goes in detail over all of the contract documents. Um, we do the art of negotiation. Um, which is really giving tips and tools about um, negotiating a contract in the best interest of your client. Um, Brandy does a marketing boot camp. Um, we have contracts to close, which goes in detail over once you're under contract, um, what happens next, uh, as well as really giving some insight on um, customer relationship management is what we call your CRM as well as pipeline management, managing your clients and future clients. Um, so those are some of the onboarding trainings that we offer. Okay. So how did you guys come together and start this company? So we actually met at a previous real estate brokerage and um, Tiffany was out for surgery and uh, I knew her, but we kind of didn't know each other. We had 
kind of been in, in, in met, we've met each other in passing. Um, so I decided to check on her pretty much every day after she had surgery. Um, she ended up coming back to, to, to work and uh, we decided to grab lunch one day and just uh, realized that some of our uh, visions and um, just that our, our end goals lined, lined up. Um, so we joined uh, another real estate brokerage and we uh, birthed the Harris Hawkins Home Team. And from there, we just have always very much been uh, aligned with wanting more and wanting to get to the next level. Um, so we decided to open the, the brokerage to, as Tiff said, just to give those agents what we didn't have when, when we started out. That is a true blessing because a lot of people, you know, how they look at us as women. We can't never work together. We can't never get along. It's just all the negative. But yeah, give us the prime example on how you guys are like seriously making it happen. Because uh-huh. when I read everything, I was just excited about this because you guys are so oh. dope. Thank, Thank you. So much. Much. Thank you so much. Um, so we just decided that we could do more together. Um, and that has very much proven to be true. I am really focused on primarily just our, our brand and definitely, um, you know, our agents growing and just thriving in their careers. Um, but we have specific duties and specific, um, things that we can add to the business. So I'm really big with marketing and, and branding and all of those trainings Tiffany mentioned, uh, those are things that she is really passionate about. She is very passionate about teaching. So, um, we just figured out the other strengths and the other weaknesses and where one of us is not strong, the other is, and we just decided to run with it. Talk about balance. <laughs> that is, <laughs> no. Seriously, that is some true balance. Yeah. Cause you know, it's so hard yeah. for people to find out what their niche is and who exactly does what but you guys have it all figured out and I love it because it's so very rare for you to meet women like you too yeah it is truly a blessing you took the words right out of my mouth (laughs) seriously (laughs) so before um this is a question for both of you so before you guys actually got into real estate did you always know this is exactly what you wanted to do or were you in a different field? Um, so no, this, this is Tiffany. Um, I actually, uh, out of the high school went into college for nursing. Um, that lasted about two years. (laughs) And then I realized (laughs) that that was something that I am always passionate about. Um, so then I, um, changed my major to business and I actually, got into property management. So prior to um, getting into real estate, I was a property manager for about eight years. Um, And I initially wanted to get my real estate license for my own personal investment um, for rental properties and kind of managing my own rental portfolio. Uh, And then my first year of having my license, a really good friend from high school was taking a job overseas. And she had some clients. She also was a licensed uh, realtor, and she had clients that she was working with that she ended up referring to me. Um, and then in, you know, helping those clients purchase homes um, and selling homes, um, I, I loved it. And here we are. Wow. Yeah. And this is Brandy. And so I do also have a, a background in property management. Um, the thing that I've done the longest is probably uh, wait tables and bartends. So I knew that I always wanted to uh, be in sales, but just in a um, less strenuous um, manual position. So um, I've, like I said, I always knew that I wanted to be in sales. I just figured that I, I just wanted to find something that would work for me, my family. Um, I did thought when I when I had a newborn, so it was very important to me to have something that was flexible and um, you know something that I could work make make work for me. Excuse me. Um, so yeah. So what is uh, one of you guys' toughest moments on starting your brokerage company? I would say um, we had a a sit down. We, we ended up going, we have the same therapist, so we ended up talking to our therapist um, together as a, a joint session um, just to kind of delegate and determine who is best at what, what, what you're focusing on, what I'm focusing on. 
Um, so I think one of the biggest challenges was us just trying to do everything and just making sure, um, you know, that the other is not letting the, the other one down and just making sure that, you know, every need was met. So we were very busy um, just making sure that the other one was okay. Um, and, and we didn't really have to, it didn't have to be so difficult as we just had the conversation up front initially. Um, but I would probably say that just that was probably the most difficult uh, or biggest challenge we faced. Listen, I applaud y'all. I love y'all even more now because y'all went to therapy before y'all did this. <laughs> yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> therapy is so <laughs> important. Today. That is so rare. You know, most people don't think about doing something like that before they start a business together. And I really commend y'all for that. That is like top tier right there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> very important. It's a very important relationship. Seriously, can you explain how important it is for people to seek therapy, even individually and with your business partner? Um, I would say, you know, we look at, Brandy always says that, you know, having a business partner or our relationship, it's, it's like a marriage. You know, you're sharing finances. Um, you have to listen to the other person because you may not always agree on everything. Um, so in treating it like a marriage, you know, you think back to um, people getting married. What do they seek? They seek, you know, marital counseling before getting married, premarital counseling before getting married. It's it's very similar to that need to, you know, make sure that everything's laid out on the table and you're able to have those difficult conversations because every day is a sunshine and rainbows. Um, and I think that you have to be in tune with yourself and know that, um at some point, we've all dealt with something that has affected how we deal with people, how we speak to people, how we handle certain relationships. Um, but I think you learn more about how to identify those things and then cope with those and, and be aware of them going forward. And that's where therapy comes in. Um, having some that outside person that isn't your friend, isn't your family, um, that can really give you not only a professional side, um, but really help you get to know yourself on a, on a different level because, you know, a lot of times we'll say, that's just how I am. Um, and that's not always the answer. And I think therapy helps you in that um, and helps you identify with the type of person that you are, maybe the type of learner or how you deal with crisis or how you deal with stress. Um, and that's important for, you know, your partner, your business partner to know um, so they know, you know, what your triggers are and, and how you may handle certain situations. So maybe they don't call you right away with bad news because they know it may, how it may affect you. So I just think it's really important in, you know, just individually being able to identify the whys of some of the things that you do, um, but then also for partnership to identify so that, you know, you each know each other a little bit more um, because business is, you know, outside of your family or spouse. This is a person that you're probably spending the most time with. Um, so needing to really dig in to make sure that you do match, that your personalities are going to match and, and what you can contribute and how you will handle the stresses of the business. Um, so mental health is, is something that's very important to, to both of us. Um, I think individually we've learned a lot about ourselves. And I think had we not had that piece, we probably would have dealt with some other issues or other things would have come out just because of us individually, what we may have been dealing with. Wow. So let me ask you this with you guys having um, real estate agents working for you. Do you guys do therapy sessions for them or offer that service? Um, no, we highly encourage it. Um, we've shared our stories. Um, I think that, you know, people in general can relate when they know that someone else may be faced with the same thing. You know, you can be a testimony to somebody else. Your story can help someone else. So I think both Brandy and I are very transparent in, you know, things that we've dealt with in our lives um, and in what led us to therapy and how therapy has assisted us. I know that, you know, some of our agents have also seek therapy from some of those conversations that we've shared. So not anything, you know, we don't want to put the pressure on anyone because um, it's a lot. Therapy can, can yes. be a lot, you know, really unpacking trauma can can really you know be a, be more than some people can handle so yes. i think just sharing and being transparent and honest with our agents about um you know not even from therapy standpoint just sharing with them maybe some some financial trials that we may have had in, in previous times in our lives so 
Um, just being transparent and honest with them and, and always being an open book. Um, the way our office is set up, we don't even have a door. We're, we're on a different level, but there's not a door just because we want to encourage those conversations. Okay. Uh, that's very understandable, but I think it's amazing that you guys even encourage them and even be transparent about yourselves too. That is very important. Um, I wanted to ask you, how can someone starting off as a realtor, how can they manage their money and be able to save and still purchase homes if they were on their own? You're referring to someone that's pursuing a real estate career, you mean? Yes. Oh, um, so everyone's situation is different. I would say uh, you definitely want to have reserves. Um, I don't like to call it an emergency fund, but you want to have money reserved just in case. Um, but you also, the thing that you need to, agency to understand is that you don't make any money until you actually sell a home. Um, so it's very important that you have money to pay your bills during that time. Um, for instance, Tiffany was a dual, dual career agent where she worked um, a full-time good government job, as she says, and um, sold real estate as well. And a lot of agents think that you can do this part-time. You know, I want to pick up real estate to be a part-time agent and there's no such thing so essentially she had two part two full-time jobs um one day and then one all day and even when when she was off which was real estate so definitely have reserve saved i know speaking from um, a personal standpoint uh she and i both while we were both full-time agents but we decided that you know we wanted to take our business to the next level with the brokerage so we both stopped getting our nails done we started doing our own nails um she <laughs> She was wearing a wig for a while. I was wearing a wig for a while. Uh, we at home. Um, you know, we just, we, we weren't shopping. We just made, I don't even want to say sacrifices because it's such a negative connotation um, associated with, with sacrifices. But we did decide, um, you know, to, to live like no one else at that time so we could live like no one else down the line. Wow. Well, that's, that's take a lot of patience and consistency and everything that comes with it for you to have that mindset. So that's very good that you guys prioritize your time and figure out things on what works for you. Yep. So, um, tell me a little bit more about your expansion to DC. No, so I, um, this is Tiffany. I, um, and, you know, recently obtained my broker's license in DC. I, prior to that, I was, a, you know, just a licensed realtor in DC. So we have a few agents that have also obtained their license. Um, so our first expansion actually won't be DC. We do intend to do that. Um, probably, we're probably a little bit further out from expanding that way. Um, a different opportunity presented itself that we are actually expanding first. Um, to Parkville, um, which is in Baltimore County. Um, our first location is in Baltimore City. So the Baltimore, loca the Baltimore County location or Parkville location is slated to open um, mid-May. We should be wrapped up on the build-out, um, but probably officially open June 1st. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so do you guys have any um, classes or anything coming up? Any specials as far as helping other realist realtors? So I wouldn't say that we have any um, classes or specials coming up, but we do have um, something that we just collectively decided to do uh, with other real estate agents, which is in conversation with Paris Hawkins and Co. Um, this is a, a time that has proven to be very challenging for a lot of agents. Um, so in conversations with Harris Hawkins and Co is a it's currently virtual, but our first um, session or I guess roundtable of uh, in conversations we had about what thirty something thirty plus agents come to our brokerage and uh, we had two young ladies flying from one from Florida one from Atlanta that we've been able to build relationships with um, on social media of all places and. Um, they just talked about their stories. They just talked about success. Everybody chimed in. Um, there were laughs, tears. We had champagne. We had good food. Um, so that's something we're definitely going to continue to do. Um, so as I said, for now, it is something that we're doing uh, live on Instagram until the pandemic eases up a little more. Okay. Well, what are some encouraging words that you could share with someone that's coming into the real estate market to help? to purchase homes or even 
just become a brokerage or anything of that nature? Um, I would say um, definitely remain consistent. Um, keep the momentum even when um, you, you don't see the money. Uh, this is a business very much where you, one, you know, we, we don't get paid until, you know, the deal is done. <clears throat> but also, if you're dealing with a lot of, of people that are, that are involved in, in one transaction wherein you don't have control of everybody. So, you know, staying consistent in what you can control, um, as well as just keeping the momentum, even if, you know, you may not initially see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it will eventually pay off. Okay. Anything else? Was is that just Brandy or Tiffany? Uh that was Tiffany. You got anything, um, Brandy? Uh, I, yeah, I guess to just kind of piggyback on that. Um, I would just say lead with integrity, no matter what the situation looks like, no matter how you feel, no matter who you think is or is not watching, lead with integrity, even if it doesn't feel like I guess even if you feel like you're getting the short end of the stick. Uh, we're always going to do the right thing, and that takes you a lot further than quick money or decisions that poorly made decisions or poor choices um, that that could affect your career. Um, Tiffany always said that real estate is a very unforgiving business, and it truly is. Uh, one one thing that you do could scar your your reputation or ruin your name for for good. So integrity first above all. That's for sure. Well, I thank you, ladies, so much for being on Life Her Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Her Podcast, where we help heal women all over the world. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Life Her Podcast, and check out our YouTube page as well. And make sure you subscribe. You can also look onto our website and you can purchase merchandise and listen to the podcast episodes. I am Yvette Lloyd. I am Life Her. Love yourself, ladies. Take care of yourself and others you love dearly.